Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. I have an interesting outfit on today, don't I? Who is this? Do you recognize this? Hopefully some of you know who this is supposed to be. I am dressed as Sven Gulli, the famous Chicago-based horror host. I didn't do the uh, makeup. He, he's, this is his outfit. It's pretty, I, if I do say so myself, this is pretty accurate cosplay. But I did not do the makeup that he wears because I don't need it. Look at me. I already am naturally the thing he's trying to be when he puts on that makeup. That's just who I am all the time, whether I like it or not. I, I just, I already look like that. I already look like that character he's creating with that makeup. I don't need the makeup. So there's that. Also, I was too lazy to do the makeup. That's the truth of it. But anyway, and it was a mess. And my skin's very sensitive. So I, I, I would probably break out in hives right on camera look like I had some disease or something okay well anyway but but I don't need the wig this is my real hair I have that on him I don't I don't need a wig all right so uh, I just want to do like a I hope a shorter episode and just kind of a, a fun episode for Valentine's Day weekend. We've done a lot of uh, information intensive episodes with lots of toys, and lots of info, and I just want to uh, take a break from that and do something just a little fun, a little light. Now, if you don't know who Sven Gulli is, do you know what a horror host is? I hope you know what a horror host is. Horror host is uh, a character that introduces horror movies on TV, could be broadcast TV these days. There's a lot of them on the internet. Um, over the 90s into the 2000s, there were a lot of cable access horror hosts. But back in the day, like 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s, they were all on broadcast television, usually independent channels. And typically Friday night or Saturday night, uh, they would introduce a horror movie and they would always be a, some kind of a character, some kind of a weird, funny character. And uh, they'd do like a little skit or something and then they show five or ten minutes of the movie. Then they come back and say, we'll be right back. And they'd break up the movie with, with little comedy segments where they'd show up and they'd do a little skit or something. Uh until finally at the end, they'd show up again at the end and say, I hope you like that, and probably make fun of the movie. Most horror hosts make fun of the movie. Um, they don't take it seriously. They, they kind of lampoon the movie and lampoon themselves. And they say, thanks, thanks for watching, see you next week. So that's a horror host. So Elvira, surely you've heard of Elvira. Uh, she's a very famous horror host. I guess the three most famous horror hosts today that are still active are Sven Gulli, Elvira, and Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, I don't know if Elvira is still doing a show. I mean, she's still very active in popular culture. I don't know if she has a, a show right now, but you know, she doesn't, she doesn't need it. She's so famous. Um, Joe Bob is on Shudder. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs, The Last Drive-In. That's his horror host show, and I watched that. I mean, that's that's the reason I subscribed to Shudder, to see Joe Bob. And Sven Gulli is on national television every Friday, of, no, every Saturday night. Every Saturday night, he's on national television on MeTV. MeTV. So chances are you've got MeTV in your area. Look it up. You probably got it. Uh, so it's Saturday night, Central Time, 7 o'clock, 
uh, MeTV. And he's been on MeTV since 2011. So a decade now of national, uh, having a nationally broadcast television show. <sighs> so that's, that's a horror host. If you've never watched a horror host show, seek out Svengoolie. Um, if you don't have MeTV in your area, you can subscribe to Shudder and see Joe Bob Briggs, The Last Drive-In. I'm sure there's plenty of Elvira on YouTube. And there's a whole universe of other, there's hundreds of them, other horror hosts. You just Google it, go on YouTube. There, There's a lot of them. And, and many that are still active today. You just look them up online. There's a, a lot of great ones. Uh, a lot of them that are they have YouTube shows that you can easily find. They most, mostly do um, uh, public access, uh, not public access, public domain, public domain movies. But Sven Googly has a license with uh, Universal Studios for their classic. He's got the Cadillac of uh, of monster movie libraries, the Universal Studios classic monsters library. So he's got the original Karloff, Frankenstein, Lugosi, Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, all those great ones. Uh, Joe Bob does more modern films and more adult films, like R-rated films. And uh, I haven't seen a lot of Elvira's show just on because I'm not she's from the Los Angeles area and I'm not I mean I'm in the St. Louis area but um she's been syndicated over over the years so I've seen a few of her episodes and she seems to do a variety of things older newer and not always horror she kind of mixes it up a little and so does Joe Bob he he's more not so much horror as drive-in so that could encompass a wider variety of things. Svingooly is definitely horror, classic horror, classic golden age horror movies. Now, when I was a kid, uh, my horror host was Sinister Seymour. The one that I grew up with was Sinister Seymour. I always thought as a kid that he was a local St. Louis based horror host. I just assumed he was. I didn't know until I was an adult. He was actually based out of Los Angeles. And he's got quite a cult following today. He's he's dead, unfortunately. He died really uh, around the time that I was watching him in the early 70s. Uh, in fact, for all I know, he might have already been passed away when I was seeing some of his shows. But the reason I saw him in St. Louis was because he was syndicated. He was based in Los Angeles, but he was syndicated nationwide. And that's how I saw him in St. Louis. I saw his syndicated show. I didn't know it was syndicated. I thought he was shooting it in St. Louis, but he wasn't. He was, he was a Los Angeles based horror host. And he had, um, he looked kind of like the shadow. He had like a black, fedora, a wide rimmed kind of a hat, not not the slouch hat like the shadow has, but um, kind of a fedora and a black cape, a black suit. He's very gaunt. Uh, he had a very flamboyant personality, very sarcastic. Most horror hosts are sarcastic. Most of them have, um, um, they're very irreverent. Uh, in fact, I would, my personal preference, I mean, there are some serious ones that try to be very scary and serious about what they're doing. I don't like that. I, <laughs> I, I think they're barking up the wrong tree when they try to be serious. Um, Sven Gulli, his real name is Rich Coase. Rich Coase. It, it's spelled K-O-Z, so I always thought it was cause, but it's not. It's Coase. It's pronounced Coase. Rich Coase. I was reading something uh, before I started shooting this, just trying to like freshen up a few things. Um, 
that the idea behind Spinguli in his mind was he, Rich Coves, didn't like serious horror hosts that took themselves seriously. And Spinguli is like a parody of those serious horror hosts. He's like a, a takeoff on them. And when I, when I, so I, I didn't know that. So when I, now that I think of it, 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 the character kind of gels. Not that it didn't gel before, but it gives it like a different dimension, a different spin that I hadn't considered before. And I, I would agree that a horror host really needs to be funny. The movies can be serious, but the host should be funny and lighthearted. And some horror hosts um, are very encyclopedic about, uh, they're, like, they're like a Wikipedia page about all the data, all the information, all the statistics about the film. Others are played a little looser and just kind of uh, crack a few jokes. Svengul is pretty knowledgeable about the movies. Uh, he, he, he makes fun of them, but you can still tell that he respects them at the same time. He's not, he's kind of laughing with them, with the audience, not at them. Uh, back to, I think I should say more about Sinister Seymour. I really, really like Sinister Seymour. I have fond memories. I mean, I was a little kid, so they're, they're fuzzy memories, but there's only a few seconds of footage that survives of him. There's, there's um, a little bit with a handcuffs and a telephone, and then there's like a, a promo he did for an upcoming show, and not much else. There's not a lot there. But seeing what's, what little there is really brings back memories. I'm, I was watching that earlier today, and, and I can remember as a kid seeing his show. I, I wish there was more. I wish more of it existed. I, I don't know what happened, if they taped over it, or, or what, they probably taped over it. But, but, but it was in syndication, so sh it's so surprising. If it was syndicated and sent out, why aren't there more tapes out there? I mean, I, I wish someone would find more Sinister Seymour tapes. And I, it's really bizarre that there's only this, really a, a couple of minutes of existing footage of him. There's a lot of audio recordings, but there's only a couple of minutes of video of him in character doing his thing. And when I watched it as a kid, it was called, I swear it was called Seymour Presents. Um, but apparently the, the famous show that he had was called Fright Night. So if you look up Sinister Seymour, everything you read is gonna be about Fright Night. The name of his show was Fright Night. Interestingly, there was a movie called Fright Night with a fictional horror host um, called Peter Vincent, played by Roddy McDowell. Roddy McDowell. And Sinister Seymour's real name, I believe, was Larry Vincent. So, and he was, of course, in the Los Angeles area, you know, Fright Night. As far as I know, it's a Hollywood movie, so I'm sure the people involved with it were, you know, from Los Angeles. So I think there's a lot of reference there to Seymour. But uh, so his his show was called Fright Night. But I could swear, as a kid, I remember it being called Sin um, Seymour Presents. Maybe that was just the syndicated version it was called Seymour Presents, or maybe maybe locally the local station gave it that title for their own reasons to promote it, I don't know. I'm sure there are very knowledge, there are horror host experts out there. I'm not a horror host expert, but I'm sure there are horror host experts who can tell me, yeah, the syndicated version was Seymour Presents, or, or what, why do I remember it being called Seymour Presents? I don't know. But the LA show that he's known for was Fright Night. So, uh, now the most famous horror host of all time. Well, there's two. I guess the most famous one of all time is probably Zachary. And he was New York based. And I had the pleasure of meeting Zachary a couple of times. He's no longer with us. A lot of these people are no longer with us. We have to, 
appreciate them while they're here. But I was able to meet Zachary a couple times and he was a funny guy. Like so many of these horror hosts, he had he was very witty and sardonic and irreverent, had kind of a, a biting kind of a wit. Um, but uh, he was, I think, the, the quintessential monster kid kind of horror host. Uh, the one that was most closely associated with the whole 60s monster kid craze. He kind of goes together with that that whole cultural movement from the 60s. Now, arguably, the 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 other you can you can debate which one's more famous. The other most famous horror host would be Vampira. She was Los Angeles based, and she's probably the the first. I mean, I'm sure there was something that predated her, but she's generally known as the first real horror host. And if you don't know who Vampire is, if you've ever seen Plan 9 from Outer Space, that spooky, dark-haired vampire girl in Plan 9 from Outer Space, that's Vampira. Now in that movie, she's just like this, like a zombie. But on her show, she was very sultry and sexy and charismatic. And uh, for a long time, there was, it was kind of like Seymour. There was almost, I think for a long time, there was no existing footage of Vampira. And finally, uh, one of her programs surfaced with all the segments. And then other things were found, talk shows and variety show appearances. So now there's actually quite a bit of footage of Vampira, maybe not in on her set doing her show, but in character doing her act in different venues for different programs. Uh, there was a good documentary about her that, that collected all that material. Um, had a good chunk, good chunk of, of footage of her. I mean, I'm just guessing all total I don't know, 45 minutes or so of Vampira footage in this thing, like in character. So a fairly good amount to, to get an idea of what her character is like. And she's very, she's kind of like a Lauren Bacall of horror, her, her personality. She's kind of got that sultry sort of mm, kind of teasing you. Um, kind of seductive but also kind of jokey and kind of uh, also sort of self-deprecating too um, so she's probably it's arguable which one is more famous Vampira or Zachary uh, they're they're kind of the king and queen of horror hosts and they're both gone now they both passed away uh, I think the current king of horror hosts has got to be Svengoolie. He's got the national show. He's got the name recognition. He's in a lot of different media. Uh, DC Comics had a, a storyline with him <laughs> meeting the DC Comics heroes. So he's, uh, I'm sure he, you'd have to say he's the king of the horror hosts right now. And it's really fun to have a uh, a horror host that's got that kind of recognition because so, once upon a time a horror host was just something a few nerds like me knew about no one really cared unless you were in an area that happened to have a horror host and not many places had a broadcast tv horror host by the 90s they were kind of extinct Sven Gulli was one of the last ones with a broadcast television show but now Everyone's got a horror host, basically, thanks to him in being available all around the country. And it's kind of cool to, to watch him on Saturday night and know that at the same time you're watching it, thousands and thousands of other people are watching it at the same time. There's a communal thing there that you don't get in this age of, of streaming and, and other kinds of personalized media where you watch it when you want to watch it 
it is something kind of cool about having to tune in at a certain time to see this program. Right now, I don't have a DVR. I did for a long time. I don't have one right now. So if I don't catch it when it's on, I don't catch it. <laughs> and I have missed the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, I, this week, and I saw it, uh, the Black Scorpion. I watched it was the last one he did. Um, but I had to sit. Th I had to sit there when it was on and watch the thing, and, and and know that at the same time I'm watching it. A lot of other people are watching it, and I could go online and see other people commenting about the movie. And there's a communal thing there uh, that's often lost today. Now a little bit about, and we're going to show toys. I should have said that at the top. This isn't just me sitting here like this. We're going to show some toys. So Mr. Coe's, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like I'm some kind of expert, but just some basic facts. I told you he was Chicago based, but the original Svengoolie was not Rich Coe's. The, the original Svengoolie was named, the real actor was named Jerry Bishop. Jerry Bishop. And he had a very different look. Uh, he was kind of like a hippie with green hair. I think he had a bandana and glasses. And I know fans of his are going to throw rubber chickens at me for saying this, but every time I see pictures or video of him, Jer Jerry Bishop, I keep thinking he looks like Rob Zombie. I, ca I can't get that out of my head every time I see him. I, I, it's not just his look, but um, just kind of the way he moves and his attitude. I, I keep wondering, was, was Rob Zombie influenced by him? Um, I don't know, but, but there's, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm the only one who sees it, but uh, he kind of reminds me of like a, <laughs> a proto Rob Zombie from years ago. Bishop's Svengoolie was on from 1970 to 73. So not a long run. And that's around the same time that I was watching Sinister Seymour in syndication. So uh, this, the horror host, I think the real day of the horror host, I think it was the 60s were the big decade for that. Started in the 50s with Vampyra. Um, but I think the 60s were kind of the busiest, biggest decade for it. And I, by the 70s, I think it was starting to decline. But then Elvira didn't come along until the 80s. So, and she's one of the most famous ones. Um, and Rich Coe's as Fingouli didn't come along until 1979. So I think in the 80s, you had these very famous ones, but I think you had fewer of them. I think you had fewer horror hosts. I think that format was starting to die out, but the ones you had were very famous because that's also when Joe Bob Briggs got started and, be, and rose to fame in the 80s. So you had, maybe I'm out to lunch, maybe this is completely wrong, but it seems to me that it peaked in the 60s and started to climb a little in the 70s. And in the 80s, in terms of numbers of horror hosts, it, as, a, as a thing that like every metropolitan area had its own broadcast horror host, I think that was sort of declining. And then, but though you may have had fewer of them, you had more very, very famous ones emerging that had a national or even international fame. Well, so Rich Coe's, he was a fan of the original Spinguli. And, and and sort of went from being a fan to sort of working on the show. And then when Bishop, I don't I don't know if he was canceled or quit or what happened. Well, well when he stopped um, in '73, I think he and Coe's stayed in touch. And then in '79, Coe's brought the show back and Coe's called himself the son of Svengoolie 
with Bishop's blessing. So in Bishop, I've, I, I watched the first episode of Son of Svengulli from 79, and, or at least the, the intro, not, not I don't know what the movie was, but the intro with the part with Coe's in it. And Bishop's has a, Bishop has a voiceover introducing the concept that this is his son. And then Coe's, you know, in this outfit, appears out of a coffin, does his shtick for the first time. So that incarnation of the show went from 79 to 1986. And then it was canceled in 1986. And then in 1995, it came back. Uh, I don't know if it was on the same station or a different station, but it was still in the Chicago area. 1995, it returned, and this time with Bishop's blessing, Rich Coe simply called himself Svinguli, not the son of Svinguli, but just Svinguli. Because Bishop said, by now, he's all grown up. He's not the son anymore, he's all grown up, so he can be Svinguli now. And then in 2011, uh, it, Me TV picked it up for national broadcast. So Coase has been doing this since 1979 with that break from 86 to 95 and then nonstop since 1995. And he recently celebrated his 40th anniversary. I think uh, yeah, this red shirt behind me has a 40th anniversary logo on it. That's a 40th anniversary commemor commemorative shirt over there. Um, he's still going strong. So that's Mugulli, the That's the capsule summary. And I like Smuguli. I watch him most every week as much as I can. Uh, and I've been watching him for what? Not a decade. I did not since 2011. I don't think I, I picked up on it right away. I saw him at a friend's house um, who lives in Chicago. When I was visiting in Chicago, I saw him. Um, I said, what's that? And he was told, that's Fingouli. Oh. So I saw him in Chicago, on TV in Chicago, before I saw him on Meet TV. And then it was like a year or two later that I saw him on MeTV and started watching him there. He might be a little too goofy for some people or too, too jokey for some people, but I like it. Joe Bob Briggs is much more serious. He's, he, Joe Bob Briggs was an actual movie critic. I mean, he actually wrote serious movie reviews. And he's also a columnist, and he's, he writes uh, columns, and sometimes gets political and gets people upset. Um, so Joe Bob Briggs is a little different, and he will be more analytical about the film and have more in-depth information and have people involved with the film there and interview them. But he's also funny, and he's also in character. So but it's a different vibe. And of course the virus is very, you know, totally jokey, and, uh, a complete character. And she'll say a little bit about the movie, but it's more about the character and being humorous. Uh, a bit more like Svinguli in, in tone, only she brings like a, obviously a sexual aspect to it because she, She's, you know, a sexy person, <laughs> so <laughs> she brings that to the to the part. I don't think Svengulli would get away with that if Svengulli tried to, <laughs> to be sexy. That'd be funny. That'd be funny, but it wouldn't work very well. Anyway, so let's see. How much time have we wasted here? Quite a bit. <laughs> we haven't even. We haven't even. We haven't even shown any toys. 
Okay, so. Oh. Spingoogly, one of the things he does, uh, he's known for these rubber chickens. So that's kind of like a trademark of his. And these are supposed to be the ones he actually uses on the show. These are Archie McPhee rubber chickens. And I, these are supposed to be the the kind he uses. Although these are all like kind of, these are almost like PVC more than rubber. They're not very rubbery. I think on his older shows, he uses rubber rubber, you know, like latex rubber chickens, but this is what he uses now. I would think though, because they throw it at him at the end, I would think if he got hit by these, pfft, they're actually hurt because they're kind of tough. All right, so <clears throat> I wanted to show some things here. Now, I don't have a big Spoon Dooley collection. I'm sure there are people that have you know, huge in-depth Svengoolie collections going back to like memorabilia from 1970. I don't, I just have a couple of things. Uh, actually this here, this is a Hallmark, Hallmark skeleton pen. And um, this is actually a collectible unto itself. This is a Svengoolie collectible because this is the this is what he actually uses on his costume. And this, this Hallmark skeleton pin, I think it's from the, is it from the 90s or the 80s? I don't remember, but it's vintage. And this is hard to get. If you eBay that, like eBay Svengoolie, you'll see one or two for sale. Um, like go on eBay and search for Svengoolie and you'll see a couple of these. And you'll see how much money they go for. And uh, there's a video of Spinguli talking about it, and even he remarks how expensive this little pen has become. And it's expensive because of him. That's, that's why it's caught on with collectors. So this is the most expensive thing, <laughs> expensive part of this costume. I didn't even, I mean, this tuxedo, I didn't buy this new. Um, so the, 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 the priciest thing is this little pen right here. Okay, so I have some, have some toys. All right, so um, I guess I don't have any vintage, except for this pen. I don't have any vintage Svengoolie stuff. I'm not sure what there is, uh, promotional items or whatever, you know. I don't have anything like that. But during his time on MeTV, he has, uh, MeTV has put out a number of action figures of Smigooly and a lot of other things too, like these t-shirts behind me and mugs and things. I don't have all that, but I have some of these action figures. I mean, I have every action figure they've made. And the, the company that makes these action figures is Figures Toy Company. Figures Toy Company. And these are Mego style 8 inch toys. And I don't know exactly what year these were made, because the year's not on it. But this is this is the first one that they made. This is the first version of this Vinguli toy. So that is the first action figure they put out. I don't know the year. I want to say four years ago, three or four years ago. I don't know. I wish there was a date on the card. I'm just, just from memory, I want to say it was like three or four years ago. Maybe it's more recent than that. I don't know. So you can see, he looks like me. There's a resemblance, isn't there? You can see his uh, top hat right there. 
Here's the back. There he is with a rubber chicken. And his in his promotional photos, he always has a real rubber chicken, like a rubber rubber, wiggly jiggly rubber chicken. But on the show, apparently he uses these Archie McPhee kind of plastic rubber chickens. Now this, it doesn't do anything. It's just a, you know, it's a Mego style action figure. It's got rooted hair. Um, it does not glow in the dark. It has tan skin. And I, I mentioned that because some of the others are different. It's got that nice <laughs> kind of plastic wrap around his head, like the old Mego, mostly the female characters, but also Conan and Thor had it too. Wrap around their head because they have the rooted hair. And actually he has pretty long hair. I've, I've seen this toy out of the package with the wrap off. And the hair is a little too long. It's a little too luxurious. <laughs> it, it does look kind of like like Conan, like the Mego Conan, with, you know, a little too big. Maybe they went a little, I think maybe if you don't mind altering your toy, you could customize it a little and trim it down just a tad. I mean, he does have long hair. It's a wig. He, he wears a wig, but it is, you know, pretty long. So, one more look at that. That is the first one, the first action figure that they put out. I wish I knew the year. I, I want to say uh, three or four years ago. I could be way off. Not way off. I mean, it could have been five years ago. It could have been two years ago. I guess that's, that's off. I don't know if it's way off. Here's the second one they put out. Um, so he's, this is glow in the dark edition. I thought his skin was white, like glow in the dark plastic, but it's not, it's tan. So I'm not sure. Okay, I think it's his, just his shirt that glows in the dark. I thought his head glowed in the dark. But anyway, here it is. Oh wait, let's get out of here. Get out of there. Okay. Here it is. So you see he's wearing, he's wearing that shirt that's on the wall back there. So this was the second action figure they put out about a year after that first one. The first one sold out and started going for big bucks on eBay. And then I think they, they felt they, they, they couldn't just leave it at that. <laughs> there was a big demand for another action figure. So they put this one out. But I kudos to them for not reissuing the same figure, for making it look different, for giving it a different costume. So the glow in the dark part, you see this is glow in the dark. I thought his head glowed in the dark, but that's not the case. It's his shirt. His shirt glows in the dark. And so does the actual shirt. That that shirt also glows in the dark. And so does the little one. The little replica glows in the dark. So let's see the back. It's modeling the shirt. And of course, it's <laughs> the action figure helps promote the shirt as well because they sell both shirts. I think this is called the official Chicken Throwers t shirt. They have different shirts they sell. And this one's the Chicken Throwers t shirt. And the reason that he's in a target like that is because in the show they throw chickens at him 
rubber chickens. If they show, if they threw real chickens at them, then you'd be getting into kind of like a cannibal holocaust, animal cruelty situation there. We don't want that. It'd be quite a free for all with real chickens flying around with feathers everywhere and pecking at them. So that's the second Sven action figure. Different costume. Wearing a t-shirt. Clothes in the dark. But it looks like the same figure, the same head. I for some reason I thought the head glowed in the dark. In my memory, before I, I got these out and looked at them again, because I, I, mean, I had these in a box for a few years, but does it paint the same? Looks like it, yeah. In my memory, I remembered this second one as having a white head, kind of like the Remco monsters. The white glow in the dark head, but it does. It has a tan head. I was mistaken. All right, so then the next one they put out, was this. This is the Spenguli Monster Set. Spenguli Monster Set. And I did not get this when it first came out. So I, this sold out faster than you expect. It was, it was, I think it was over $100 when it was new. And none of these were cheap. They were all kind of expensive, even, you know, brand new. Uh, but this one, particularly, this was expensive. So I, I wasn't very quick to buy it, but uh, it didn't last long. And so for a long time, I didn't, I didn't I didn't have this because they were going for big bucks on eBay. And finally, I found one at a good price that wasn't that much above the original retail price. And that's how I wound up with this, luckily. So this is a nice set. Let's... Obviously, these are the, uh, these are the Mego Mad Monsters from the 70s. They're not the actual ones from the 70s. These are reissue versions of the Mego Mad Monsters made by Figures Toy Company but obviously based on the Mego Mad Monsters from the 70s. And there's Fingouli looking a little disheveled with his hat. <laughs> um, so let's see these. There's Dracula, Mummy, Frankenstein. And Spinguli. Now, over the back, there's a big picture of Spinguli and his chicken. That's the promo image they use all the time. They're always using that promo image. Emerging from his MeTV Dungeon Studios, Fingouli provides chills and chuckles with vintage horror movies and some of the classic creatures of cinema, like the bloodthirsty Count from Transylvania, the living mummy from the tombs of Egypt, and the malevolent monster brought to life by lightning in a mad scientist's laboratory. And they have headings above each one. The Monster Frankenstein, The Horrible Mummy, The Dreadful Dracula, and The Horror Host Svengooly. It's a cute set. Um, you know, they're decent reproductions of the Migos. You know, nothing beats the original. The Mummy is the one that looks closest to the original even though the pattern on the bandages is different, but at first glance, it's not obviously uh, 
a reissue. I mean, if you just held it up, I would say, oh, it's a Migo Mummy. And then I take another look and say, oh, well, no way. It's, the bandages are different. Okay. Whereas with these, uh, the Dracula and the Frankenstein, I can tell like that, that they're reissues and they're not original. It's very obvious. Uh, but, I mean, they're, for a modern toy, they're, you know, they're pretty good. All things considered. And, and of course, most of the people who buy the set don't know that they're reissues. They don't know that they're Migos. They, most of the people who buy the set just, it's a cool set of monster toys with Svengoolie because he hosts these movies with Dracula and Mummy and Frankenstein. So there they are. There's the monsters from the movies that he hosts. And then a few nerds like me will look at him and say, oh, Migo. Those are the Migo monsters. So it's a nice set. Very nice set of toys. Okay. So the last one. And I don't know if this is still available. I should have I should have looked on the MeTV website to see if this was still available. This one lingered a long time and it may still be available. The others are long sold out. This is the most recent one. This came out this past year. And for all I know, it might still be on the website. This is the Svengoolie Studio set. And it has his coffin. It has a rubber chicken. And it has a background that looks like his studio. So here it is. The Svengoolie Studio set. There he is in his original costume. In both this and that monster set had him in his original costume, not the t-shirt. Only the second edition of that figure had him in the t-shirts. All the other ones have him in the red tuxedo shirt. There he is. And this is the coffin he has on the show. And I know the people who designed that coffin. It was designed by Acme. Oh, what's their full name? It's Acme something. Well, it's Acme is basically the name of the company. Uh, I've been in their studio. I don't remember if I was in the studio when they were designing that. I, th I don't think so. I think they'd already done it when, when I visited their studio. Uh, but their full name is like Acme Design Company or something like that. I can't remember. I know, I know it's Acme. That's easy to remember because of the Warner Brothers cartoons. So there he is in his coffin. There's the little rubber chicken. You can see it's got the target on there. I, I did, I did, did I explain a second ago about the target? The, the target motif is because he's a target for rubber chickens because people throw rubber chickens at him. And this background, the insert, so if you turn around, it's got that promotional, it was not, it's a different promotional image of him this time, but you can flip this card around and then stand this up and then it has his studio backdrop and then you know theoretically you could play with you could play some glue so this backdrop you see here it's not going to look good with these big bubbles but if you flip it around flip the card around then you've got like a little backdrop and you can put his his uh, coffin there and have him you know <laughs> walk around I wish it came with more chickens you could throw at them. So let's see what this says. Direct from his world famous coffin in the MeTV studio dungeon, Svengoolie is clearing all airlines with spooky horror flicks, flocks of rubber chickens, and loads of laughs. The, each show begins with this voice saying, 
clear the airlines, clear all air, clear all airlines for the big broadcast. So that's why they mention airlines. So this is a nice uh, toy. Now this one, I think it was forty bucks, was the original price, and it's lingered. For, the rest of these things sold out, but this one lingered a long time on the website. And it might still be there for all I know. I think it just wasn't um, enough value for your money at $40 because I, I think the other figures were $25. Uh, the individual figures. And I just, I don't think this plastic coffin was enough of a value to justify the $40 price. Um, if, if the lid had been three-dimensional instead of a sticker... Is that a sticker? Is it screen printed on? I don't know, but it's flat. You know, if, if it had been three dimensional with that skull face, and, and on the show that face moves and the mouth opens and closes and the eyes move, if this had been three dimensional, then I, that's a whole different thing. But I think, the, yeah, then obviously the coffin would add a lot of value to it and be worth the extra price. Because it's just a flat, you know, kind of ordinary coffin with this artwork on the front, I, I don't think that was enough of a of a of an extra bonus to justify the higher price. I think I'm guessing that's why it hung around the website for much longer. Or maybe people were just satiated. Maybe everyone who wanted a Svengoolie figure had one. I don't know. I wish he came with a lot more chickens. Why not have like a, a bunch of chickens? to just one that would be cool so you could throw it at them so it'd be nice if the coffin were three-dimensional and if the uh if it had more chickens but you know even without that it's pretty cool does he have you know so the inside of the coffin doesn't have any artwork because on the show he's got kind of a red or burgundy sort of um cushioning it's in like a coffin shape. It's kind of lopsided. The coffin isn't quite right, but this got like cushions, this cushioned interior stitched in a coffin shape. And it would have been nice to have the that represented maybe as a sticker or something behind him. That would have been cool. Um, so it's neat, but it could have been could have been neater. Because now, now with this coffin, you're getting into like a, a playset kind of a territory. So you can be a little pickier about it. I think the individual figures are just fine. I don't know how much better you could ask for. Uh, are they are they sideshow hot toys quality? No. But they're pretty good. I don't know how they hold up if you take them out of the bubble and try to play with them. I don't you know, figures toy company. I, I don't know about the build quality on their toys. It probably wouldn't stand up to aggressive play, but who knows? They look good on the card and the package. Um, I think that's enough. Let me put him back. So. So far, those, those are all the Spinguli toys. I think they've probably saturated the market. I think with four toys, um, you know, two individual figures set with monsters and set with the coffin, I think that's probably enough. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they'll come up with another one. I don't know what else they can do. Uh, have him and his musical partner Doug uh, because Svengoolie sings a song every show and Doug plays a keyboard I can't imagine them making a figure of him I don't know what else they could do maybe get away from the Svengoolie character and do like, Kerwin is his prehistoric talking chicken he's got like a puppet it's like a 
dinosaur looking chicken. Maybe they can make a toy him. I don't know. And there's other characters, the talking skull, there's all kinds of things that they could do. But I think Kerwin is the low hanging fruit. If they were gonna do another toy, make make a Kerwin. And if he and if he actually has a mouth that moves, so much the better. Because he's based on a pre existing toy that's like a crocodile or a or dinosaur or something they had. Because I remember these toys where you push a button and the mouth would move. They just built him over that. You could tell they just kind of customized one of those and put a chicken body, put a like a rubber chicken body under it. So it shouldn't be too hard to make a Kerwin with a mouth and moves. I don't know, or maybe they're done making Snigooly toys, but this is where they're at so far. They got four toys. Two figures and two play sets. Okay, that's it. That is my little Snigooly collection. I didn't, this is an hour, I didn't think we'd get an hour out of this. It's ridiculous. How did, how, did, how did it take so long? My gosh. Wow. I thought it'd be like 20 minutes. Because I talked so much about horror hosts. Acting like I know anything about horror hosts. I know nothing about horror hosts. I am a lay person. There are people who have written books about horror hosts. Look them up, and then you'll get the real information. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, that's it. I don't know what kind of a Valentine's Day <laughs> you're going to have, what kind of a Valentine's weekend you're going to have with the, with the pandemic. All my Valentine's weekends are pretty much the same. Uneventful. But I now I've got plastic chickens to keep me company. I should, if I want to offer uh, myself as a valentine to someone, I can offer the chickens. Will you be my valentine? And offer them a chicken. And if they said yes, then they're a keeper. Do these squeak? These seem like they should squeak, but they don't. So they're like, more like a plastic, a PVC, than a rubber. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed seeing me in my silly costume. Hope that entertained you. you know, seeing this four little Sfigouli toys that took an hour to 45 minutes of build up and then 15 minutes of toys. Thanks for watching. Remember, if for, if for some reason you want to see more of this kind of programming, remember to subscribe, subscribe to this channel, click the bell, like this video, and also I have a Facebook group. There is a Basement of Horror Facebook group, so there should be a link in the description. Go to the Basement of Horror Facebook group and join. Join the Facebook, Basement of Horror Facebook group. Facebook is just generally one big basement of horror. So this is a little, little basement of horror within the big basement of horror. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, he who dies with the most toys is dead.